All right, welcome back. All right, so I got my coffee, I got my Slytherin tie. Let's talk about this. All right, so the first question any student should ask when learning something new is, what, why is this important to me? Why is this something I need to know? And that's a valid question, and I think that should be answered every time somebody tries to teach you something. Picture this. You work really hard on this project. It looks awesome. You put so much work into it, and, and everyone's really proud of it. You save it. You send it over to the client. They call up, and they say, boy, this is garbage. What the heck is this? And you're like, what are you talking about? It looks great on my screen. Aha. Maybe someone who saved it out wasn't really aware of different file types, file formats, what they're used for. And they just picked one randomly and just sent it off to the client and it destroyed the work. And that's very possible. That can certainly happen. And for those that are not in the know, that probably happens all the time. However, you are going to know better because we're having this conversation. Quality is king, right? Quality is everything. So let's talk a little bit about common file types. Let's split this up into two main categories. There are pictures, or what I call static imagery, and there are video files, or animation clips. Those are the two main file categories that we're gonna talk about here. And as far as pictures go, the most important thing you need to consider is the quality. And it's not just the quality of how you got it, it's the quality of what's gonna happen once you save it. And that comes in two flavors, lossy or lossless. And they're kind of funny words, but here's the difference. Lossy means that every time you save it, that picture gets worse. The quality goes down. The compression artifacts start coming into play. You start losing colors. You lose details. Things kind of get stripped out. That's real bad, obviously, right? And then there's lossless, and you can imagine that's the opposite of lossy. No matter how many times you save that file, or that image, or that video, or whatever the case may be, it never loses quality. So that probably would be pretty advantageous to work with, right? Because if you have to work on something, and you open and close it, open and save it maybe 50 times before it's done, boy, if you're working in a lossy file format, that thing is gonna turn pretty bad at the end of the day, right? So that's huge. Common files that are actually lossy, well, everyone's heard of a JPEG, right? And you can consider JPEG pretty much the bottom of the barrel when it comes to quality. There's a reason why everybody uses JPEG, but when you're in a professional visual effects environment or motion design or an animation environment, no one's using JPEGs, okay? It's for preview purposes only because every time you save a JPEG, it gets worse. So if somebody sends you a JPEG that you need in a project, well, it's better than nothing, right? But immediately, I'm always saving it out to something else. Okay, so JPEGs, why would you send a JPEG to somebody? Well, if you work on this humongous billboard and it's fantastic quality, or whatever the case may be, you may send a JPEG or a preview or a static shot, and that's fine because that's not the final result. That's just an image that someone may look at on their screen or on their iPad or their phone to say, yeah, that looks good, let's go with it. Okay, so that's not a big deal to save them out that way because you're not really using that in the pipeline. You're just simply saving, sa sending that out for review or whatever the case may be. There are lossless file formats like PNG and Targa and TIFF and EXR. These are all great, and I'm going to explain to you what these actually mean. And, you know, we're going to get through the ones that are most important to us. We'll open up Photoshop, and I'll show you maybe the top five or six or seven file formats that people in the industry use. There is no reason to throw, you know, 20 file formats at you if you're only going to use five or six of them in your life. We don't need to go back in time and talk about the history of them. We need to talk about stuff that's going to be useful for you. So quality. Super important, right? Especially when it comes to pictures. Another thing with pictures is, does it have an alpha channel? And you know, if you don't know what an alpha channel is, it's simply a, another channel that serves as a black and white mat that tells the computer that something is transparent and something is not. That's all it is. So we have some images we're going to play around with that have uh, alpha channels in them. And, and it's pretty useful if you need to put something on top of something else but you need to see through the background or a hole somewhere. That's an alpha channel. That's why it's used. When I'm looking at images, even on images that support alpha channels, because like, first of all, JPEG, don't ever look for an alpha channel in a JPEG. You won't find it because that file format doesn't support it. But others do, like Targas and EXRs and TIFFs and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean it has it with it. It doesn't mean it comes with it automatically. It just means that you can save it with it. But if somebody 
somebody saved it without the alpha channel, then you should probably call them up and say, what happened to the alpha channel? And then there's bit depth. And we're not going to go much into bit depth in this course. If you're really interested in high dynamic range imagery or 16 bit or 32 images, you probably want to look into our digital compositing course, which is also available here at VFXU. I teach that one myself. I love it. But bit depth is pretty important because the colors that are available to you on your monitor or on your iPad or your iPhone are a lot less colors that are available in the movie theater right? Or sometimes on TV, if you have like a really fancy TV or, or in, in a video game. You can think of bit depth as color depth. We're not going to go too much into that, but that's pretty important to, to talk about. And I put it in there for the sake of being complete about what I'm looking for in static imagery. Now let's talk a little bit about video files. And they share a lot of commonalities with pictures. Obviously, the quality is paramount. What's the quality of it? Well, it's almost always lossy. In fact, it is always going to be lossy. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means how lossy is it, right? Some file formats are much better at retaining information than others. You may have heard of a codec, and we'll talk about codecs in a little while, called H.264. It's very common. Blu-ray, it's common on the web. It's common all over the place. Is it a great quality codec? No, it's practically garbage, in fact, right? However, you're always weighing two things, quality, file size. File size goes up right? Quality is going to go up. Quality goes up, file size goes up. Quality goes down, probably your file size is going to go down. And if you're delivering something, if you put a movie on your, on your website, you obviously can't have a four gigabyte movie on your website. It's going to take forever to download. Nobody will ever see it. But I bet it looks great, right? So quality is pretty important. There's a bunch of formats that we'll talk about on that. Also in video files, they can, can have alpha channels as well. Usually in video files that are put together in, in what's called a container, and I'll tell you that in a little while, in containers, alpha channels are pretty rare. ProRes is one of them that can actually support uh, an alpha channel in a, in a movie container. But video files also come with what's called sequential frame images, sequential frame sequences. And you can think of those as just like CG renders, or maybe you, you wrote out a piece of footage. And that can have an alpha channel with those, of course, because now they're basically just static images. Codecs and bit depth. Like I said, we talked about bit depth before. Codecs we'll talk about in video files. It's super important. And sequential frame sequences, which I just touched on a little bit. And that's those are really important to know. And we will talk a little bit about that when we get into video files. But, you know, all of this comes down to I'm trying to protect your work. I'm trying to make sure your awesome work stays awesome when you show it to the client or the director or whoever it is you have to show it to. Because you can, like I said, you can take a beautiful, beautiful image, save it out as a JPEG, send it over to an editor, and it's going to be, and they're going to say, what the heck is this? It's been destroyed. All right. So things to keep in mind. Okay. Now in our next video, let's actually maybe jump through Photoshop and actually take a look at some of these real quick.